Wow, hello guys, welcome to my channel. You're welcome to Master Bidas Online Academy. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. I'm super, super excited to welcome you back to another session with me. Thank you for sliding over to our channel. Thank you for subscribing to our channels, liking our videos, and then making positive comments about our videos. We love you guys. Thank you for following up. So in today's lesson, I'll be teaching you on the aspect of leveling in engineering surveying for year two students. All right, so the aspect of leveling and sectioning. But in this module, we shall be looking at the calculation part of it straight ahead. All right, so we'll be examining the calculation part of it. And then if you can see clearly on my screen, we have problems and solutions. So I don't need to waste your time because I don't actually want this video to be too long all right so let's dive into the question we have the very question number one before us we have a question as this a line was taken between bm5 and bm6 bm means benchmark so benchmark all right so these are is an acronym bm is an acronym so bm5 is a starting point and then bm6 is the finishing point or the end point then the continuation the level is set at any point between all stations. We have the back site, we have the fore site, and the intermediate sites are taken as follows. And as you can see now, we have a very short table before us. We have back site at A to BM5, back intersite at A to TP1, intersite at A to TP2, intersite at A to TP3, fore site at A to TP4 back site at a to tp4 intersite at b to tp5 this at this point now a level has been changed then intersite at b to tp6 and then four site at b to this so as you can see now a and b are actually the change of levels okay but when we come to bm5 to bm6 in between bm5 and bm6 we have point one we have point two we have 0.3, we have 0.4, we have 0.5, we have 0.6. Are you there? Although we have 2.4 here, TP4 appeared twice, but I will tell you what and what to do to TP4. All right. Now, if we move down, let's see the question as we have it. The question says, work out the problem and show and show how it is entered into the level book. BM5 has an elevation of 165.235 meters full stop we are asked to use both the height of instrument and the rise and fall methods are you with me now from the question remember we are asked to work out the problem it shows that there is an error or if possible if we were given benchmark at five which is the elevation at benchmark five the starting point we should also have benchmark at tp1 i will also have elevation at tp1 tp2 tp3 tp4 tp5 tp6 so these are the things that we're asked to work out the elevation for each of these points as you can see and then the values for each of these points we are given so the first thing we want to do is that when actually working out elevation and then levering issues there are two basic methods that you make use of we have the height of instrument. We also have the rise and fall method. So in this module, we shall be taking these methods one after the other. I hope you understand the question. So let's dive into the solution part. Okay, so as you can see now, we have our solution right before us. We have solution right before us. And then the first method that I have here is rise and fall method rise and fall method as you can see from the question we're actually asked to what enter this value in level book level so as you can see it here, here this is level book so this is the table we call the level book as far as this is consigned at this moment okay so we have a colon for point we have colon for back side we have colon for inter side we have colon for four side and then because we are using rise and fall method we will create a colon for rise create a colon for four and then the reduced level that we will be deducing for each of the point 
and finally we have the remark this remark actually represents a b that we were given at the change of what level so we have bm5 tp1 just arrange them in ascending order tp2 tp3 tp4 tp5 and then tp6 as you can see here each of these points appears one here okay we have tp1 once tp2 tp3 tp4 all of these points appear once on this table okay as well this point you can also call it stations okay now if this is clear all we just need to do is to go back to the table we're given with data and then impute the values into this table now let's go up to the question now this is the table all right so the first table is where we have bs at a which is backside to bm5 are you there so this is the value that we have and this value is what a value for backside so we'll come to the table and put it for backside for bm5 backside that is all then we move up again the next value which is tp1 value this is the value let's get the value copied i have copied the value now then this is under intersite as you can see now for tp1 the value should be placed under intersite so we'll move down here tp1 we have the value under intersite again we move up to tp2 this is the value let's copy the value this is what we have 1.208 and there it is also under intersite we'll move down and then we'll place the value under intersite we go up again to tp3 which is 1.253 we get the value copy again this is also under intersite for tp3 we come to the table and then place it under intersite if we move down to tp4 we have 3.585 this is the first copy or the first value that we have and this value is under foresight as you can see the first tp4 is under foresight so we come to the table foresight for tp4 we place the value here then we move up again we have another value 1.787 under the tp4 again but in this case it is backside so it means that at tp4 we have a value for foresight known and then the value for backside also given so we come to tp4 and move down under the backside then place in these values okay then we move up to the same table we move to tp5 other tp5 we copy this value 1.270 and then this value is under intersite as you can see move down to intersite intersite so we place it there for tp5 it's under intersite then we move up again to tp6 for tp6 we have 2.209 and then we get this value copy we move down and again if you check now this is what tp this is tp6 is under intersite so the value will also place it under intersite then finally we have bm6 and then bm6 we have 1.765 we get the value copied and this is under foresight as you can see from here they will come here and then we'll put it under foresight this is how to enter the book readings into the levering table now that we have done this we want to start using the rise and fall method proper because this is just in um positioning the values we are given into the leveling table we have not done anything other than to arrange the figures in the appropriate columns okay so we have done this now the next thing we want to do now is to obtain the rise and fall for these lines remember for every point you only have either a rise or you have a fall you cannot have a rise for in both both in a point or in a station so you see that point tp1 has a rise or a fall it can never be both similarly for other points but one of the things is that for point one and point two there is no rise there is no fall because this is the starting point it is when you take a step forward or backward whichever case as it is that you know whether you are accelerating or decelerating when you accelerate that's when you have rise when you decelerate that's when you have four you understand it as descending so when you are ascending it is rising so at bm5 we are starting at a point standing also at a point we have not moved any distance so it is when we move we know whether we experience a rise or if also and on this note nothing of such is at this point so i just feeling dash dash but the big question now is that in 
solving problems on leverage using rise and fall what do i need to know about this rise and fall method because it is not just going to be very easy for us to just fill this table without understanding the principles on all how it is employed okay so how do we apply this rise and fall methods to solve problems on leveling now let's get these principles as we can see here now look at it so now in using rise and fall these are the things you need to know to obtain rise or fall this is these are the four equations that will help you out backside minus intersite will is equal to rise or fall backside minus foresight is equal to rise or fall intersite minus foresight is equal to rise or fall the intersite minus intersite is equal to rise or fall as you can see now these are the four possible model at this level that will help you obtain the rise or the fall so the big question is when should i have a rise when should i have a fall when the difference between the backside and the intersite or the backside and the foresight or the intersite and the foresight or the intersite to intersite when the difference between those values is positive you have a rise but when the difference is negative you have a fall so you need to understand this condition so for instance if we are using equation one now backside minus intersite if the value i have is positive i will put the value on that rise if the value I obtain is negative, I will put the value under 4. But meanwhile, while placing the value under 4, you don't need to indicate the negative sign because 4, anything under 4 is taken as negative. So that is for that. Then, to obtain reduced level, which is the elevation for each of these points, TP1, TP2, TP3, TBM5, because BM6, because it was only BM5 that was given. So these are the formula. Reduce level, new reduce level. This subscript N is for new, then subscript O is original or previous or old one. Okay. So new reduce level is equal to previous reduce level plus rise. Why are we adding plus rise? Because rise is a positive value. Then equation C, you have new reduce level is equal to old reduce level, which is previous reduce level minus four. Remember, four are always negative. So Equation 5 and 6, they are actually the same, only on the ground that rise is positive, 4 is negative. Then finally, to check whether what you have done is adequate, you can use this equation here to test run. The summation of all the back sides and then the summation of all the first sides, when you find the difference, and then find the difference also between the first re reduced level and the last reduced level, you should have the same result and this is what we will check with equation seven so i believe you may not properly understand what i have said so far now let's start implementing this so you need to pay attention to how i will begin to implement all of these things one after the other so now let's start from tp1 i have explained the tp uh, bm5 that nothing happens there so now that we have moved from bm5 to tp1 it is either we experience a rise or a fall so how do i get the the rise of four here remember bm5 is the previous position why tp1 is the current position so in the previous position i have backside which is 1.6363 and then in the current position i have interside that means for me to be able to find rise of four here i will be using equation one backside minus interside i hope you are getting the logic one after the other are you there so if we subtract 0 0.845 from 1.663 will definitely have a positive value of 0 0.1 of 0 0.818 so we have 0 0.818 this is what we have it is under rise because the value is positive now we move down to tp2 under tp2 our previous level remember now we are now moving from tp1 to tp2 so tp1 will now become our previous value YTP2 will become our current value. So we'll be subtracting 1.208 from 0 0.45. Remember, this is not done on the basis of subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number or a smaller number from this bigger number. No, it is on the concept that you are subtracting the current value from the previous value. I hope you got that principle. Subtracting the current value from the previous value. So we are actually subtracting 1.208 
208 from 0 0.845 and if we do this operation we'll have negative 0 0.363 so we have negative 0 0.363 and this value is under 4 remember you don't indicate the negative sign then we are done with that we are now at tp3 now at tp3 our level the level from which we move to tp3 is tp2 so it shows that 1.208 is now our previous value while the current value is 1.253 so the difference between this now will be what 1.208 minus 1.253 previous minus current and so if we subtract 1.253 from 1.208 we'll definitely have a value of 0 minus 0 0.045 and this would be under 4 so we have 0 0.045 then again we are now at tp4 at tp4 we move from tp3 to tp4 so our previous value now is intersite 1.253 are you there but the current value now is what 3.585 now there is a big question here so this is the back side. All right. So now at this point where we are, at this particular point where we are in now, we are between TP3 and TP4. TP3 is the old one and then TP4 is the current one. So in order for us to find the rise of 4 at TP4, our previous value is 1.253. But the current value is either 1.765 or 3.585 which one should we use now if we come back to our formula here you will find out that there is no place where you are removing backside from intersite or backside from you can only subtract from backside why because backside is the first reading so every other value should be subtracted for backside so if you come here if this is our previous value which means we are supposed to be having intersite minus so because we cannot have intersite minus backside but we have intersite minus foresight as we have in equation three intersite minus foresight so we are going to be using this value and then this value are you with me i hope you have gotten the condition why we are using foresight you cannot remove backside from intersight you can only remove foresight from intersight so if we remove this value 3.585 from 1.253 we we'll have this as negative 2.332. So 2.332. This is what we have. And we do not need to indicate the negative sign. Then we are done with that. We move down to what? TP5. Now that we are at TP5, should we use the foresight minus intersight or backside minus intersight? Again, you cannot remove intersight from it it is not possible now if you check the four possible equation that i gave earlier you see that there is no place where you have four sides coming first you can only have back side back side or intersite intersite come first so it shows that if i am at this point tp5 i cannot use the four side at tp4 as my previous value so i'm going to use the back side at that level so the back side there is 1.76 five are you there so then the current value intersite for the current station we are in tp5 is 1.270 so if we remove 1.270 from if we remove 1.270 from 1.765 we'll have a positive value of 0 0.715 so that positive value will be placed on that rise zero 0.5117 now we have gotten that then we are now at tp6 so at tp6 our previous value is at tp5 which is what intersite so we're going to be having intersite minus intersite and if we subtract 2.09 from 2.270 we'll have a negative value of 0 0.939 and that is 4 so we have 0 0.939 Nine. are you there then finally at tp6 we have four sites at T uh, bm6 right yes at bm6 we have four sites and then at tp6 we have intersite so it is possible to remove four sites from intersite like we have 
in equation three here are you there we can remove four side from inter side so if we do remove that from there we we're going to we are going to have a positive value of 0 0.44 0 0.444 so we have successfully obtained the rise and fall for this particular method but we have not obtained the reduced level but meanwhile the reduced level for one of the points must be given and as you can see from the very question we're given the reduced level for the bm5 was given so we can get the value copy and then paste it here as you can see now so this is the value that we have okay that's the value that we have all right so this is what we have so it is from here we can now obtain the value for other point the bmc's so now that i have gotten the reduced level how do i find reduced level to obtain reduced level it is either you add rise to the previous reduced level or you subtract four from the pre previous reduced level i hope you understand the basic principles one after the other so if this is understood then if we come here our previous reduced level which we have here is 16 165.235 now at this point where we want to find the reduced level tp1 what we have there is right so that means we'll be adding this 0 0.818 to 165.253 and then if we do that addition we we'll have 166.053 this is what we have again we want to find the order because it's very very simple to perform you can still leave this value in your calculator what do we do now to get the reduced level here at this level what we have is four so that means we subtract this 0 0.630633 from 166.053 and if we do subtract this we have again 165.690 690 then this is now the current reduced level now if we move down to tp3 what we have there again is also 4, right? So if we subtract 0 0.045 from 165.9690, we'll have this as 165.645. Then we move down to TP4. At TP4, we also have a 4. So we'll be subtracting 2.332 from 165.645. And if we do that, we have 163 point three one three are you with me again we move down to what tp5 now currently at tp5 where we are we have a rise at tp5 so that means we'll be adding this rise to 163.313 and if we add 0 0.517 to 163.313 we'll have this value as 163. 830 830 all right so then we move down to tp6 at tp6 again our previous reduced level is 163.830 and at the current level where we are in we have a 4 of 0 0.939 and a 4 is negative value so we are quickly going to subtract this value from the last reduced level and if we do subtract 0 0.939 from 163.0.830 we will have this as 162 162.891891 are you there then finally we are at bm6 at bmc so we want to obtain the reduced level here yeah, as well now the previous reduced level that we have is 162.891 then at this point where we are bmc's what we have there is rise and rise is positive so we are quickly going to add 0 0.44 to 162.891 and if we do this addition we have 163.335 so this is the answer to this particular question using rise and four are you there so we have successfully implemented equation one equation two equation three equation four equation five and equation six are you there so the only equation we have not used now is equation is just what equation seven so 
this equation cell is just to help you check whether your iteration process is correct so what do we do here to check for this correction all we need to do is to first of all add up all the back sides we'll add up all the back sides so let me get this summation sign so if we come here so this is the summation so we we'll sum up the back side and if we sum up the back side as we have it this will give us three points 450 and then if we sum up the first site like we have here again this will give us five five point 5.350 all right so this is the summation of the values that we have here now all we just need to do to perform this operation is to check out the difference very quickly so how do we check out this difference let's come over here as you can see just watch the screen for you cannot see what i'm doing so remember using the equation seven we said that summation of all four sides minus summation of all back sides so the first side is what i have taken now then this is the back side copy the back side and then we put the value here then is equal to according to what we're given is equal to then if we also come over to this place we were told that the other side is what first reading reduced level minus last reduced level so our first reduced level here is 165.230 whatever all right so we'll place the value and then take this up minus the other reduced level which is the last reduced level is 163.335 they will get this value copied and then paste it here all right they will move this now if we move down to the next line if we subtract 3.450 from 5.350 we'll have 1.900 1.900 then if we subtract 163.335 from 165.235 we'll also have 1.900 so this is the answer to this very question so we have been able to perform this and check it out so you can check this out that the difference between the summation of off fork side and that of back side finding their difference and the difference between the first reading and the last reading are equal and the same so now that we have verified this it shows that our iteration process is actually correct i hope you understand this very very well so this is it if you have a question kindly drop your question at the comment section guys if you are yet to subscribe to this channel kindly subscribe to this channel and do make sure you give us a thumbs up don't forget to share don't forget to like guys without further ado let's jump into the second method as required that we should use the height of instrument so how do we use the height of instrument we have method number two here method number two here again without wasting much of our time we can as well come over here to fill in this table okay so we'll fill the table this is on the back side then i can as well get them from here this is on the inter side all right i hope you understand this before now so i don't need to waste much of our time here then this is the next option we'll move it down to this level Remember, we have three intersite there, back to back. So we'll get this copied, and then we move it here and paste it here. Then we move down to backs. Okay, four sites at TP4. So let's go down to TP4, four sites. Place the value there. Then the back site on that TP4 as well. We get the value, and then we we'll place it there. Then we we'll move to TP5. At TP5, you can pick the value here. It's on that intersite. Or intermediate sites they will come here and place it there for tpc and also have it on the intermediate site we'll copy this and then we move it here then for bm6 we have it on the first site as this value they will copy the value again and then place it here on the 
for size. So guys, we have performed the same thing that we did while we were using the rise and fall method. So in using these methods, there are basically two things that you do. Okay, what are those two things that you do? One of the things is what you find the height of instrument and then the reduced level. So in this case, now what we are looking for is the height of instrument no longer uh, rise or fall. So the big question now is that how do you obtain your height of instrument and how do you obtain reduced level? Let's quickly dive into this part as we will see the necessary equation. Now to obtain the height of instrument, this is the equation, equation number one. Height of instrument is equal to reduced level plus backside. Now, let me quickly place an emphasis on this equation number one for height of instrument. Now, anytime you want to find height of instrument, you must ensure that the reduced level and the backside are taken from the same level. So, if I am at BM5, the reduced level there is what I will use and the backside at BM5 is what I will use. None of them should come from a different point. Are you with me? So if I am taking this at TP4, both the reduced level and BS will also come from TP4, not any other point. That is the basic law for height of instrument. So it therefore shows that if there is no backside, the height of instrument remains the same. The height of instrument only changes at a point where there is a backside. Otherwise, you maintain the same value. Now, the question is, how do we obtain reduced level? To obtain reduced level, this is how you obtain it. It's either you are subtracting your foresight from height of instrument, which is previous height of instrument, or you are subtracting intersight from previous height of instrument. So, equation one, equation two, equation three. From equation two and three now it is very very clear that you cannot find a new reduced level by subtracting back sides from height of instrument it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that okay so these are the basic principles that you need or laws and formulas that you need then to check up we have equation four which is the same thing as what we have done before so let's quickly implement this equation one equation two and equation three without wasting much of our time. So the first thing we want to do is that we need to remember that the reduced level for this is given to us. See? So we come here and then put in the values. Again, there is something we are about missing, but it's, like I said, it's optional. When we check the question that we were given, we have A, B, C, D, sorry, A, B, right? So A started from BM5 to TP4. Then from TP5, we have B. So we can come here and then just indicate that this part this is A, 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 A. Then from TP5, and we have B, B, B. All right, so this is what we have. The same thing we can also do here. We have A, 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 A. Then we have B, B, B. All right, so this is it. Now we come here. Now that we have successfully placed all of this now, what is missing in BM5 is what? Height of instrument. So it is possible for us to obtain height of instrument here because we have a backside and then we have reduced level. Coming to equation one, height of instrument must be equal to reduced level plus backside and both must be taken from the same station or the same point. So you see now, so if we then add, as you can see, if we decide to add 1.663 to 165.23, the height of instrument, the value we have that we'll place under the height of instrument will be 1. 66.898. This is the height of instrument. For as long as this question is consigned, there will not be height of instrument here. There will not be height of instrument here. There will not be height of instrument here until this level. Okay, where we have a backside. That's when the height of instrument will change. So the height of instrument that we have at BM5 will remain the same to TP3. It is at TP4. That the height of instrument will now change to a new value hope you understand that so this place will remain void because we are using the same value so now the question is how do i now find my reduced level so to find the reduced level we just begin to subtract interside from our height of instrument or foresight from height of instrument as given in equation two and equation three interside from height of instrument or foresight from height of instrument so if we come to tp1 what we are given there 
is what interside. So we will be removing this interside from the height of instrument. And if we do this at this uh, subtraction, we have this as one six six point zero five three. This is what we have. All right. Again, the same height of instrument here. We don't use reduced level. Again, we are only using the height of instrument and then the interside or foresight. Don't forget, this is the model, equation 2 and equation 3. Take your time to understand this very, very well. And you have the opportunity to replay this video over and over again. That's why this lesson is coming in video format. Are you with me? So now, if we move down to this level, this is the height of instrument. So we'll be removing 1.208 from the same height of instrument we will have this as 166.690. Again, the same height of instrument minus intersite again at TP3. This would have given us 165. So this was supposed to be 165. Okay. Then if we remove that, we'll have this as 165, 165.690. 645. All right, then now that we get to TP4, we we'll still need to find the reduced level here first. So, to find the reduced level here again, what do we need to do? The previous height of instrument minus foresight. We don't subtract back sight, we only use the back sight to find height of instrument. So, previous height of instrument minus what the back sight, sorry, the foresight at this level, which is the one I highlighted. And if we subtract 3.585 from 1. 66.898 we'll have this as 163.313 all right so this is what we have now at this point now we have a back site so since we have a back site and we have a reduced level our height of instrument have to change at this level we, have, we want to find a new height of instrument since we have a reduced level at that point and back site remember the height of instrument remains the same until there is a back side before the value changes. So what do I need to do? I need to add 1.765 to 163.313. And if we do that, we'll have this as 165.100. So for as long as we move from TP4 to BMCs, there is no other back side. It shows that there will the height of instrument will remain the same. Are you there? It will remain the same. All right, so how do we now find the reduced level here? This is now the height of instrument that we'll be using. And to find the reduced level, this height of instrument minus intersite, which is equation three, would have given us the reduced level at TP5. And if we do this subtraction, this would have given us 163, 163.830. Now we move down to TP6. At TP6, again, at TP6, when we come down to come down to TP6, we have the same height of instrument is maintained or true. So 165.100 minus the intersite, which is 2.209. And this will give us 162, 162.891. Are you with me? Then finally, to find the reduced level at this point, again, we'll be subtracting the first sight using equation 2 from the height of instrument, which is 165.100. And if we do this subtraction, we will have this as 163, 163.335.335. So 335, right? Yes. So guys, we have been able to fill the table accurately. Now, one of the things that you need to check is that after performing this iteration process, you must check out that the reduced level you have using method two is the same as the one you had using method one. Very, very important. Very, very important. You must have the same reduced level all through the points whichever method you use it's just like quadratic equation whether you use sort of you use graphical method you use factorization method you use uh, whatever method you use you should have the same result or simultaneous equation whichever method you use to solve a particular question you have the same result so if we also 
carry out our check using the same method we used before, we will still have the same result that we had before. This is what we will still have here. All right, so this is what we we'll have using equation seven and or equation four in this case. So guys, like I promised, I have successfully hold you by the hand and walk you through the process of applying the rise and form method and the height of instrument method to balance levels. Look at the question, work out the problem and solve, show how it is entered into the level book. So we have successfully done all of this without wasting our time. So guys, I know you have actually gained massive value from these tutorials. You have gained massive value. So kindly subscribe, share this video, like this video and make positive comment at the comment section if you have a question guys kindly drop the question at the comment section and make sure you do not forget to give us a thumbs up we love you guys thank you for watching see you guys in the very next class where we shall be solving this second question number two i wouldn't want this video to be too long so i have to shorten it for you so that we can make the second example in another video we love you at master builders thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you see you guys in the very next class bye